In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up a full-length sizing die, as well as talking about some interesting tools and techniques that you can use to get proper shoulder bump. Now, the reason we want to get proper shoulder bump is so we're not overworking our brass. And what that means is pushing that shoulder down much further than it needs to be. So for, in this case, 223 for my auto loaders and my AR, I like to push the shoulder down about negative three to four thousandths. Um, if you're plus or minus deviance of like about a thousandths, meaning I don't want to go negative two, but if you're like negative three to maybe five thousandths, then that's okay. Maybe even six thousandths, but you do want to be careful again to not overwork your brass just because ideally it's nice to have this brass last as long as it can. Now, AR is pretty harsh on brass, so usually life expectancy on 223 brass in an AR isn't that great versus, say, my bolt action, my 6.5 Creedmoor. I think I'm on my 16th firing or 15th firing on my Peterson brass, so that kind of gives you an idea of what to expect. So if you're not overworking your brass, it can last a pretty long time. Usually your primer pockets, which where your primer sit, is one of the first things that might give out on a lot of cartridges. So anyway, first thing we need to do is when you have a new die is clean our die. Mine, since it's been cleaned pretty recently, is fairly clean, but when you get them factory, they're going to have uh, rust uh, preservatives or prohibitives all over it. So we're going to want to get all that off. And you can use any type of cleaner or degreaser, um, say if you have like M Pro 7 or a gun cleaner. But personally, I like to use Simple Green Extreme, and I dilute mine 1 to 3. And this is really good for cleaning your bolt carrier groups, your bolts, even your barrels. And I've been using it for a little while, and it's awesome. Plus, it's really cheap. It's about Right now, it's about $19, $20 for a whole gallon of the stuff that you dilute. So it works really, really well. So what you do is simply just spray this all over the outside of the die. Also, you're going to want to uh, unscrew your spindle and get your spindle as well, as well as the inside of the die. And that's all you really need. Then you could take a shop towel or rag or whatever you got, wipe down the spindle. And usually this spindle here, or this uh, mandrel, you might be able to see kind of has, it's really shiny, kind of has some wear marks, but usually there'll be a lot of um, of case lube that'll gather around here after a while. So maybe after around 500 to 1,000 uh, cases reloaded, you might need to pull apart your die and clean it. Just keep an eye on it. So we'll keep going. I also like to wipe the threads of the die, especially when they're new. So just kind of put my thumb in there and get the threads really good. There we go. You can see you get a little bit of dirt there. And we can also take a brush and brush out the dye really good. I'm just using a uh, bore brush. And then, actually, yeah, I'll take the patch too. Just a, any size patch. And get the inside of the dye, uh, dye really good. Get it dry. Take that, throw it away. So now we have one clean die, and you can really, probably won't be able to even see it on camera, but really shiny on the inside. You can see it maybe a little bit. So what I like to do after this is take one-shot case lube and pre-lubricate slash protect the die too from rust a little bit. You can also take something like barricade or uh, anything that also prevents rust. Because some of these dies will get, especially if you have oily fingers, will get some rust on them, and it sucks. <laughs> so just take a little bit of a this case lube, spray it just a little bit on there, a little bit on the inside. I like to get the outside too. That's probably good enough. So now we just take our spindle and screw it into the die. Now Hornady wants this... Um, capping pin to be protruding about 3 16 below the bottom of the die. So what I'll do is take some calipers, since I'm picky, and measure it. Um, you don't have to do that. You can just eyeball it. It'll probably be fine. And what that does is set the 
mandrel at the proper position as well. So this is the only time you're probably going to want to check your manufacturer's manual or look it up online, but you're going to want to find where they want that decapping pin set or what their particular instructions are, just so you know you're getting the full capability of your die and that you're using it properly. So this is only thumb tight right now, but yeah, I'm going to take the calipers. If I can juggle what I'm doing, geez. So I need to go up a little bit. So I'm looking for, I wrote it down, 1.88. 0.6. Oops, don't cover that. There we go. 0 0.755. 0 0.84, just a touch more. Uh, 1.870. See, I'm just taking the top of the caliper. I don't know if that was in frame. Sorry about that. But I'm just taking the top of the caliper measurement and just, just flattening it out and measuring the decapping pin. So I was at 1.7, or, well, I think I moved the calipers. 1.860, that's probably good enough. So these Hornady dies have wrench flats on them. See if I can show you right there, which is really nice. Um, so what we're going to do is just take a wrench... I'm going to zoom out so I can get out of this tight view. And then I'm just going to cinch down this uh, spindle just a little bit. Doesn't need to be crazy tight. That'll do it. Go ahead and set those aside. So now we have our cleaned and pre-lubricated die that is ready to go. So, I can go ahead and set that aside too. What you'll need is either your um, your thumb screw, your man, my brain just went <laughs> just went off. This is a, a a locking thumb screw or breech lock. Wow, I I am sorry, I cannot recall what it is. Anyways, this is the breech lock uh, version. This is Lee's version of a collar that usually you you tighten these down and and tighten it by hand but this one actually will hold on to the die so if you have the breech lock challenger like this press here it uses these type of breech lock bushings or, or breech lock things whatever they want to call it i don't know my brain is not working all of a sudden <laughs> so you're going to want to grab one of these as well as if you're also using a lee you're going to want to grab the primer arm and this just prevents the primers from falling out left or right because i'll try to show you but you'll see it has on this side, there's a hole as well, and it drops down and feeds into a tube or trash can. But there's a hole here, and the primers can fall out here as well. And you'll just want to latch this in. Just like so. And that way, most of the primers should fall into that tube. So the next thing you'll want to grab is your shell holder. I'm using the Hornady shell holders. I think they're pretty well made. This is for 223 if you're following along, number 16. So we are going to want to snap that into our press, just like so. That's all there is to that. And I'll go ahead and just put this, well, I'll go ahead and put this in the, in the press first. I'll show you how that works and a little caveat to this. So on the breech lock, not only is this thing kind of finicky and it's really, it's supposed to be quick change and it kind of is, I feel like you have to move it around a little bit. As you'll see here, it's pretty sticky. Um, so what you want to do is put it in and turn it until this button pushes up. Some people like to do this to try to get this press to be a little bit more consistent and tighten it down like so. But the thing is, I found out this can get stuck. And you have to take like a rubber mallet or something to get this off. And it's just not fun. Sometimes it can get really stuck on there. So what I'd recommend is just doing it how they recommend and just twisting it until this button pops up and you'll be good to go. Another thing you want to make sure too is that this, uh, sorry, is that this uh, locking ring is loose. So just loosen that up. So now what we're going to do is thread in our die until it touches the shell holder. So that's what Hornady recommends and that's what we're going to start with. We go back to our press view. We're going to raise the ram until it bottoms out. 
and just thread in the die. Till about right there. Then we'll go ahead and tighten our lock ring. That's good enough. And that's a good starting point. That's usually what Hornady recommends for these dies is tightening down to the shell holder. Some of them will have you do another eighth to a quarter turn, which we may need to do. So what I'll do next is talk about those couple of different interesting tools that I had mentioned. So one of which is a case gauge. And what this is doing is mimicking a chamber or a SAMI spec chamber. And SAMI means Sporting Arms and Manufacturers Institute. I, sporting Arms, yeah, I believe. Anyway, it's the information you need to know. All you really need to know is that it's a standard in the United States and that if your brass fits in this case gauge all the way flush, and as you see right now it's not, that your brass is sized down to SAMI spec and therefore it will fit in your chamber. And this is true for bolt actions or auto loaders. For auto loaders, you definitely want this to be set proper for reliability and full function, especially in the AR so it doesn't get jammed up or even worse, where you have to mortar your, uh, your AR. I've had to do that once. Um, you don't want a round getting stuck in there. It's not fun. So as we see here, this is range pickup brass that I bought online and it does not fit. So this obviously needs resized. The other interesting tool that I have here is a headspace comparators. I believe what these, these are called by Hornady. Um, there's several other manufacturers as well. Uh, I just have the Hornady one, it works great. And what it's doing is measuring the shoulder. So what you do is just put these on calipers and it gives you a reference point. Now, be careful with that name that it's not a measurement tool and it's not a case gauge, it's just a comparator. So it is comparing one cartridge to another cartridge. And these actually may be different sizes because since this is a range pickup brass, it could have been fired out of different chambers for all I know. So when you fire all these pieces of brass out of your same chamber, in my case, my AR, all of our shoulder bumps, once we have our die set, should be consistent, which is great. So this can tell you the differences there, which is pretty cool. So in order to use that, we just put it on our calipers. It's pretty simple. What you do is tighten down this thumb screw, just give it a set, and then tighten down the thumb screw. And then how I like to use it is zeroing out the calipers, or well, you can zero it out like this and measure it that way, or I like to zero it out on a cartridge. And just give your cartridge a little spin so you know it's set right, zero it out. And now we're ready to see if our die is bumping our shoulder negative three to four thousandths or so. You can even go to five thousandths. Maybe six thousandths is okay. And the reason we want to bump the shoulder only three or maybe two to three thousandths or two to four thousandths for a AR or autoloader is because we don't want to overwork this brass. Typically brass life in an AR isn't good anyway. But to give you an idea, I have about 15 firings out of my Peterson brass and a 6.5 Creedmoor, which is really, really good. I might get three to four out of these before the case necks start to split. Um, but we don't want to overwork our brass because ideally we want to reload these multiple times, not just once. Otherwise, it's kind of pointless, right? So if we can get this shoulder bump correct, we're not overworking our brass and it will function reliably, which is awesome. So this is the one I think I had zeroed. Yep. So let's see if this other one is going to match as well. It'd be kind of interesting if it did. As you see, it's negative one and a half thousandths. Keep in mind, calipers are generally only accurate about two plus or minus a thousandth. So if you can get your variance in a thousandth range, so again, if you're shoulder bumping and it's saying negative three thousandths, then it's saying negative four thousandths, that's okay. Um, and again, I would also still recommend getting a case gauge and you can always just check it in there too. And if it drops in there freely, we know we'll be good to go. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is case loop. Not an exciting topic, but it's an important one. I really love Imperial sizing wax. This stuff is awesome. It's pretty cheap, it will last forever. I mostly use this in my precision stuff. I typically don't use it in my AR stuff unless I'm just doing a few. 
The reason is because it takes forever. Lubing up individual cases, especially when you're talking about doing a bulk reload for an AR, because I usually load about 250 rounds in one sitting. So what I like to do for ARs or any auto loader is just take a tub and then use spray lube. And spray lube is this. This is by Frank Ferrarsal, and you can buy, you can, or I can drop it. Um, you can buy even the one shot. I think one shot's a bit expensive, so I only use it for when I'm lubing my dies. Um, but you could use that as well. But yeah, I just buy this stuff. Make sure you give it a good shake because the lanolin, lanolin was set on the bottom. You can also make this stuff, which is awesome. But what I do is just set a bunch of brass in a tub and I shake it while giving it three or four sprays like so. And that's really loud, so I won't keep doing it. But point being, I'll close that up. Sometimes I'll close the lid and just give it more of a shake. And then you're good to go. And then you can take one of these and just feel it. And if it, like right now, it feels pretty good. Usually three to four sprays does me pretty well for the uh, 223 brass anyways. But there you go. All your cases will be lubed and you can just start reloading pretty quickly. So as for our Imperial sizing wax, we don't spray it. We just take a little bit on our fingers like so. This stuff is very, oh, well, I'm grabbing the Q-tip. <laughs> this stuff is very slick, so you only need to use it sparingly. And we're going to rub it on the case body. We're going to avoid that shoulder, which again, the shoulder is the angle part. We're going to avoid that because we don't want to get case, uh, we don't want to get shoulder dents. And we're just going to try to get that neck. It's really hard on 223. And we're going to take a little bit of uh, the wax on a Q-tip. Got a little bit much there. I'm just going to put it inside the case neck as well, and this one's good to go. So the next thing we need to do is just slide our uh, case into the shell holder, and then raise the ram until it bottoms out. Just like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and wipe off this case since it's really dirty. Or not dirty, sorry, it's really slick. And we'll see what our comparator says. Now, if you can read that, it's about negative one thousandths, which means that means we need to adjust our die a little bit further. But let's check our case gauge. And it's going to be hard to tell, but it's pretty much sitting flush there. Maybe it's beveled out just the top a little bit on this case gauge and how you use these to demonstrate is um, on the Hornady ones you rub your thumb top where it says Hornady in 223 you just run it from top to bottom there and it should feel pretty smooth um, on this there's a pretty harsh uh, crimp where the primer is removed which we'll be removing in the next video so it might feel rough but just try to feel that base a little bit and if you rub your thumb across the other side where there's the indent it sh you should feel a little bit of a bump. So a little bit of bump there and no bump there. In this case, I feel a tiny bit of a bump. It's probably okay. But since we're only minus the thousandths, I want to go a little bit more. And I'll show you how to do that. So all we're going to do is adjust our die clockwise. So we're going to push it further just a little bit. The reason I started with touching the shell holders, because that's actually what Hornady recommends you do. So I'm just going to give it probably not even an eighth of a turn. I found this die is pretty particular. So maybe just like that. That might even be slightly too much. I might even go back a little bit because you can always adjust it down further. Cool. So I think I'm just going to use the same case, to be honest with you, which is OK. Go back to the press, do this one more time. And let's give it a good old measure. It's really slick. It looks like we're reading about negative two thousandths now. So we might even need to go a little bit further. But for the sake of time, I'm not going to do that. As you see, it's pretty simple. You just simply turn the, the 
um, die down ever so slightly a little bit until you're seeing, in this case, minus three to minus four thousandths would be good. And then you can always check with your case gauge. Most of all, if it fits flush in this case gauge, you're still pretty good to go. So really, this one's probably fine. And all you do is just run every single piece of, or every single one of your brass through, and then that will be it for resizing brass. The next thing we're going to want to do in the next video is remove that primer pocket crimp that I had mentioned. And since this is uh, basically military brass, this is Lake City, it's really good stuff. It has a primer pocket crimp, and they do that so the primer doesn't fall out. If you had bought Hornady brass, Lapua brass, Peterson brass, whatever, they're not going to have that. So you save yourself a step. The downside is that brass is more expensive. So anyway, that will be coming up in the next video, and I hope to see you there. Have a good one.